Everyone has a story. Settle in as we cast a light on the true tales of the strange, the haunting, and the humorous from real people in the community. From Portland, Oregon, you're listening to The Richly Bizarre with Chad Williams. Welcome to the first episode of The Richly Bizarre. I'm Chad Williams, your host, and I have my first guest in front of me right now, an IP engineer, or also known as a, w- <laughs> a WAN Don't engineer give my real title. <laughs> <laughs> from Camas, Washington, mother of a kayak and volleyball loving preteen girl and wife to a professional baseball coach. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We're going to have to fix all of this at the end. Um, she's a willing subject to many of my multimedia experiments, mm-hmm. including this one. Mm-hmm. She's been there for the beginnings of each iteration of multimedia experiment that mm-hmm. I've conducted. Mm-hmm. And this is no different. Mm-hmm. Uh, so bless her heart for that. Mm-hmm. It's a little different. We met in 1999, if I'm not mistaken at ELI electric light wave back in the nineties. I think we did. It wasn't 2000, was it? It was 1999. No, no, I think, no, I think it was 2000 because I started in 99 and then I think that Suzanne introduced us in March. Oh, it was after the holidays. Mm -hmm. It was after the holidays. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish that we had met in the 1999 timeframe. Yeah. So we say 90s. Back in that century. Oh, well, that blows that that one. Scratch that one off the list. Let's start over. Um, this is a funny thing that uh, <clears throat> I uh, thought would make a good icebreaker for this program. <laughs> so there's this anagram generator online that you can take somebody's name and type it in, and it will tell you a number of anagrams uh, that that person's name translates mm-hmm. into. And I put yours in, and uh, <laughs> you've got some interesting <laughs> ones. <laughs> So this is just Nicole Russell. It's just your first and last name. So oh, boy. When you use all of the letters, uh, you end up with ill enclosures, like ill as in sickness. Like ill el- enclosures. El- okay. Not uh, L enclosures. Mm-hmm. Not that. Uh, nurses cell oil, like cellular. Nurses cell oil. Uh, and sullen recoils. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if any of those make a good drag name, or not, but <laughs> that's what you've got. Sullen recoils. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, sullen recoils. <laughs> One night only. One night only. So uh, mine. Uh, actually, I should have wrote these down. I've only recalled one of them from mine. Uh, it was um, whimsical lad. Isn't, Wouldn't something like sweet? chili wad <laughs> be one as well? Let's see. H. You got to use every letter. Oh, you do? Every letter. Chili Wad I am. Welcome to. Ch- <laughs> you could be in a band. I don't know. Welcome, Chili Wad. Tala Luna. <laughs> Chili Wad. Tala Luna. That would be a good drag name. There were some weird ones on it. Actually, some of them were kind of inappropriate. I, maybe I'll bring those up on uh, future episodes, but the one that I brought to this one is Whimsical Lad. Whimsical lad. Of course, I brought the cute one, didn't I? Yeah. I brought the cute one. We'll start that way. (laughs) See what we are come episode 20. (laughs) Then you'll be Chili Wad. I will be Chili Wad. (laughs) Stay tuned for season two. (laughs) So um, one of the other things that I wanted to uh, imbibe on on the show is the drink. So I, you know, we live in the the Valley of microbrews in the Portland, Vancouver area. But, um, tonight I'm drink, drinking a Mexican lager Pacifico <laughs> because it's simple and it's a great, uh, weekend starter. Um, and so I'm enjoying a Pacifico and Nicole, what are you drinking? I'm having vodka from a mini bar that was stolen. Oh God, I don't think that. Yep. <laughs> Not even going to say where. What she means is... She Chad gave it to me, vodka though. Vodka from the mini bar <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. 7-Up that's, was legal. It's just well, it's just well but vodka. I don't think the vodka was. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's 
will never air. <laughs> well, cheers, friend. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Well, so this podcast is about weird friendship. Okay. It's about friendship. No, it's about um, stories of the weird, the bizarre. I feel uh, so. Mm. I, I should give a little background on why I'm starting this podcast. So, I grew up in a family of storytellers. Uh, my dad mm. being at the forefront of that. My really? dad is always a very, um, very animated storyteller, and he puts a lot of detail in. Like his stories, like thirty minute detail. Oh yeah, like it's okay for you to be done, kind of detail, or <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh, I really love this story. Absolutely no, like you could probably wrap it up oh, right. in a okay. short period of time. But so that's what inspired you. <laughs> absolutely, and my dad's not the only one. I've got aunts and uncles that do the same thing. My aunt Joyce, Ooh. oh, she can spin a tale. It's fantastic. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I came from a sorry. Yeah, no. I came from a family of very tight-lipped people mm. who didn't tell stories. Um, they kept everything to themselves. Really, no matter what. Really. Yeah. Hmm. Do you feel that you've fall, followed suit on that? Or? No, no, I, I think, think I talk. So I think I talk I think a open. lot more. I think that my mom helped to kind of dispel that. Even though she's not much of a talker, I think that she helped to change that but yeah my family really helped kept things to themselves oh, interesting. so it's interesting to be around somebody who like had a bunch of people that wanted to yeah talk. yeah i didn't really i wasn't a storyteller as a kid but i was very enveloped in what my family really would share oh. yeah and of course we would do a lot of camping Mm. I call it campfire fodder. You know, I think I said that to you when I described what this podcast was about. It's campfire fodder. It's the sort of mm. stories that really don't lend themselves to everyday conversations. They're the kind of things oh. that you reserve for the evening by the fire. Uh. Oh, I've got a weird thing for Ooh, you. Oh, I like that. This happened. And it might just be a sentence worth of content. But um, I think this forum allows us to uh, embellish on that a little bit more. Just spill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Perfect. Of course, it's a great topic to drink on. <laughs> yeah, for sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, for the audience, I wanted to tell you why I chose Nicole as my first uh, subject. <laughs> well, of course, I've known Nicole for a couple of decades now, and we've shared a lot of <clears throat> just just life experiences um, together, and some of them have been uh, richly bizarre. So one in particular that I wanted to share, and this is more humorous than anything, is a uh, story of Nicole's trouble trousers, as I like to call them. Oh, no. It's a pair of blue pants that uh, I think you still have them, don't you? And they occasionally get brought out. <clears throat> Not occasionally. It's <laughs> frequently. Yeah. Definitely every week <laughs> they make it onto my body. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this goes back to uh, Nicole and I working at Electric Light Wave, uh, which is a telecom company uh, in Vancouver, Washington. It no longer exists, but at the time, I don't think that oh our gosh. dress code was really articulated in a black and white fashion. Back Nobody then. talked to me about clothes. Nobody talked to me about clothes. and. Mm -mm. Uh, I'm sure Sorry, Marnie. cargo pants weren't really appropriate uh, fashion-wise. I don't think yeah. that is business no. casual no. in the least, no. like, unless you're taking a hammer into work. But <laughs> we weren't for telecom. There's a few uh, photographs liked of it. us from back then that have <laughs> surfaced recently in my research for this really? podcast. No, not really. But, oh. but no, no. There are some <laughs> pictures that, that I have that uh, I'm wearing... Like a polo shirt and khaki pants and dress shoes, but white socks. Well, that was when you probably had your tips mm -hmm. bleached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I digress. So going back to the blue pants, can you Oh no! bring us back to the beginning with the first incident 
that got your trousers, got you in trouble with your trousers? You'll have to stop me, like, mm. if the story is... Goes beyond 45 minutes. Not in the direction that you want it to go <laughs> in. I'm not a person that tends to uh, buy a lot of new clothes, and so I believe these pants at this point are probably close to... 25 years old and I guess I apparently thought that they would be appropriate for all stages of my life and I guess I thought it would be business casual at all stages as well and maybe it was at one point but um, apparently as I worked for one of my managers they deemed it after about I don't know 10 years of working at a specific (laughs) company that a certain pair of pants were not appropriate and I don't know why it was just that one pair of pants because my whole attire obviously fell within that realm of clothing like nothing else was like more businessy than those pants but I guess I guess somebody must uh, somebody must have brought it up I never thought about that before somebody must have brought it up that like those weren't appropriate and so it got brought to my attention I thought it was a joke because I couldn't imagine that someone would care that much about my clothing as they would about my production at work. And so I think I just laughed it off. And um, it then got brought up to me again that that was not appropriate. But this time I was going to be written up for... Who's bringing this up to you? My manager, which I will add that I love my manager. <laughs> I loved her at the time, and I think she's great now, and I still really respect her. And she's probably her. very diplomatic about it here. Oh, she was ultra diplomatic. Yeah, of course, I... I still took it as a joke, but... Um, <laughs> no, but I got written up, and um, I was just still... I think I was in my 20s, and when you're in your 20s, you know, things are still, like... Uh, you just care a lot about stuff. <laughs> that you don't care about stuff when you hit your 40s, but like things mean more Mm -hmm. and you care to stand up to the man for things. And so (laughs) that's how I was. And uh, so uh, I thought it was ridiculous that my pant situation was more important than what I provided to the company in production. And so uh, (laughs) have I told you this whole story? It's been, it's been some years. It's, it feels like new. It's quite an embarrassing story, but okay. So like, it's all right. I get written up and I get pulled into HR with my manager and me and it's so embarrassing. And so at that time I felt the need to <laughs> really let management and HR understand what <laughs> Well, what they were calling those blue pants where they were calling them sweats. And like, <laughs> so I didn't think they were sweats. I thought they were business casual. Uh-huh. And so like, I felt the need to then take a brown paper bag full of six pairs of sweats to indicate to HR and my management what sweats were. And so you had a presentation. I had a presentation, <laughs> man. And I had like, a, a, I had stuff to present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I showed H as after I was told, Hey, you've been written up for these pants. I told, I showed HR all six pairs of sweats that I had and showed them like, like for comparison. Yeah. For comparison's sake, like obviously what I was wearing wasn't sweats, but these are sweats and these are sweats and these are sweats. Smell them. Yes. So, so that ended up getting me oddly enough and to more trouble oh. because um, because they didn't like the fact that I stood up to them and, oh. and told them that oh. I had sweats. But probably what you don't know, my friend, is that there's actually, I don't know if you know this, there's actually more of a backstory to it. I don't know how long I should make this Please. story. Okay. This is the time to get it out. Okay. So like the form. go backwards like a, a month And I'm sitting in a meeting with like 50 people and the president of our company at the time. And the president Mm -hmm. of our company is making this like uh, presentation to everyone within the company about like how important it is that they have good employees and that they compensate the employees and provide them um, just, just provide good compensation for good work. 
Well, I knew I was in a position at that point where I was producing a lot more work than other people. And my management was trying to get me a raise at that point. And it had been like months and they were like, sorry, we can't get you a raise. Can't get you a raise. So my, so as I'm sitting there watching the president of our company tell us, oh yeah, we totally want to compensate people for really good work. I'm not one to not wear my heart on my shoulder. And so I must have had this look on my face that was disgusted. So after the meeting, the president of the company pulls me off to the side and said, you know, it looks like that you're really dissatisfied with what I had to say. And so I'm not good with not keeping in Mm -hmm. what I feel. So I spilled out to her and I'm like, hey, I've been doing all this work. And like you're saying that you want to compensate people for really good work. But my management says I, I, I can't get a raise. So anyway, this does apply because... Within 24 hours of that conversation, I had a raise, and then like four other people who our management had been trying to get raises for had raises. Oh my gosh. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's incredible. It is totally incredible. It's very effective. But then you bring into the fact that the head of the HR now has me in the their room telling her what's a sweatpants and what's business appropriate. Mm -hmm. So with all that backstory and me telling HR what's appropriate for business and casual wear. Um, so, um, a couple days later after I tell HR what's appropriate for someone to wear, um, my manager, myself and the HR lady get pulled into the president of the company's Ooh. office. Like I actually got to go into her office. The only time I've ever been to the office <laughs> of the president of our company. And she told me how displeased she was with me that like they had taken care of me, um, for really? what they had, yeah, for, you know, what they had provided us and what she was willing to do. And now I'm doing what I'm doing, um, by standing up for a pair of sweats, which it was silly. It was ridiculous, but I was in my twenties And so, um, I got reprimanded for standing up for those blue pants pants. by the president of our company. Wow. Yeah. She pulled me into her office for that. What was that meeting like? It was so uncomfortable. (laughs) Like walking with my manager up there, like... (laughs) I didn't know there was a fourth floor to this building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, walking <laughs> up there, like she had a sweet office, man. Like that office oh. was like so huge. Like it was bigger than, it was just really big and it had like couches and like all these different seating areas, like really big. But it was really uncomfortable to be, excuse me, excuse me. It was really uncomfortable to be in her office and to be reprimanded by her. I mean, she could have fired me like, right away. I've never given away all the details about it because like, it's kind of embarrassing and I don't like telling people that I got a raise and that's prior, prior Mm -hmm. to it. And that like, that's what begot me getting into so much trouble because she was just so ticked that like, I would like find that to be so important Mm. with what she had done for me. So Mm. I don't know. I don't Mm. know. That's kind of how I took it. Oh. But anyway, yeah. And what's also interesting about that, which I've also not told you, is that when we got, you know, she got brought in before we were going to get purchased by another company in 2006. Yeah. Okay. So she got brought in for that to like kind of cut the fat. And so when we all got laid off, we all got bonuses. I got half the bonus that everybody got because it was within six months of me getting reprimanded. <gasps> and I know it was because of that. Oh. Yeah. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Ow, ow, ow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. that was deliberately put aside and dissected. And mm-hmm. Oh, no. I, got half I the didn't bonus. know that. Yeah, straight up. Well, the funny part about it, right, is that like <laughs> my mom, who worked at the same company that we worked at, <laughs> I found it so ridiculous that I would get reprimanded for these pants that I've been wearing for like the last 10 years. She, <laughs> she wore them the next day to work. <laughs> like after I got <laughs> reprimanded, she wore them the next day to work because she f- could fit into them. And, <laughs> and her boss thought it was absolutely ridiculous. I would have gotten reprimanded <laughs> for that for pants. 
Um, and so, she, yeah, she wore them to work, and they all had just a great laugh about it. And, oh, that's that's delicious. Yeah. So did she have a run-in with the... No way. Nobody had a run-in with anybody. No. Just me. After, <laughs> it's just you. Even though your mom was sporting those pants the very next day. Sporting those pants. We had the same HR... And like, I don't like those pants anymore. Like they're just not comfortable. And like the drawstring on them. Yeah. They have a drawstring. But Maybe I should have known they were <laughs> <pants>. <laughs> concealed. They were concealed behind a whatever. A so yeah. Shirt. So like, they're just not that comfortable anymore, but I can't get rid of them. Like they just mean so much. They have history. They do have I'll history. I'll end up in a plastic display box. I hope my daughter lit. keeps them forever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We'll insure them at some point. For progressive uh, workwear hmm. movement. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be popular again. My daughter will be able to wear them someday. <laughs> Maybe. On that, let's take a quick break and uh, we'll be back shortly with Nicole Russell. Do you have a compelling story? Are you interested in sharing the details on a future episode? Email us at therichlybizarre at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Welcome back to Thank The Richly you. Bizarre with Chad Williams and my special guest, Nicole Russell. And you're it's welcome. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to go way further Episode for this one. to get Richly Bizarre, my friend. I know. I mean, We're gonna have to... the... I don't know. I might be the wrong person for Richly Bizarre. Uh, not, 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 uh, uh, not true. Uh, <laughs> I think we've gone pretty deep with, uh, troubled trousers. I guess maybe. That's right. There'll be other opportunities. All right. Season yeah. two, season three. And if they pick us back up season four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're back, uh, Sweet to touch yeah. on. Uh, two Truths and a Lie, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is an icebreaker uh, to get to know our guest, which would usually come at the beginning of the show. Mm. In this instance, it's going to be Three Truths and a Lie, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Nicole Russell? I'm not looking at your notes. I just can't remember which stories you know and which stories you don't know. That's okay. And so... You know the kind of memory I have. So how about how about I give you three truths and a lie, and then if you know you know much more than I thought you knew, then I'll give you the last one. Okay, okay. But that might be obvious. So <laughs> we'll just go with it. And this is a tough one because, as we've pointed out, we know each other very well. Yeah, right. It's all right. Okay, so um, hmm. now nah, I'll just go with this. Okay, we'll go on three truths and a lie. Okay, right, so right. my first truth mm -hmm. is that when I was six years old, my mom and I were traveling to the Sisters Bend area to visit um, a couple that we knew named Det and Ganella. That's really They're, specific. I know. They're Swedish. Okay. And um, on our way to visit Denton Ganella, we, well, we had to take a bus. And so we had to stop in a bus station to change buses. And while we were changing buses, I passed out. On, well, I'm six. I passed out on the floor of the bus station and my head hit the foot of a patron that was standing behind me. I oh. came to and saw everyone and I had passed out. So anyway, so that's oh. my first story okay. that I passed out in a bus station when I was six. Okay. Uh, my second story is when I was, uh, I was about seven. I was doing cartwheels with some neighbors in our front in our front yard. So there, uh, Angie was the youngest kid and Michael was the middle kid. The way you looked at the ceiling suggests this is a true story. Okay. Well, I, Brian was yeah. the older brother. I'm trying to remember all the details. And so Michael was doing a cartwheel in our front yard. And as he did a fart, a fart wheel, a fart wheel. 
We've all done those. <laughs> it's a lie. Um, as he was doing a cartwheel and I was standing too close to him and he came up and he kicked me in the belly and I just got, I don't know, I just started to feel sick and I passed out oh. right there. And when I came to, I threw up. <laughs> There's more to this story. That's story number two. Uh, story number three. When I was a senior in high school, uh, they had a blood drive. I had never given blood before. And so I went to the blood drive. My friend Ho Yun was, <laughs> she, she'll never watch this, but in case she ever does, she'll <laughs> think this is funny. So she was supposed to hang out with me the whole time, but she chose not to hang out with me and go, <laughs> probably go to class. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> Uh, so I was alone by myself. I was giving blood after I finished giving blood, they pulled out the needle and I passed out oh. and I peed my pants oh. in high school. Mm. That's my third truth. Mm. Okay. Um, my, I will, yeah, I will give one more okay. truth for you. My fourth truth is when I'm in college and I was at a party and I, it was my sophomore year and, you know, I mean, we had, we had been drinking and stuff, um, but we went to, it was just me and this, um, my friend and then two of her friends and we had gone to this party. Well, this party was almost like a, like a family reunion party. Like all these people knew each other, but we didn't know any of them. And we were dressed to party <laughs> and they were not dressed to party. They were dressed for a family reunion, like kind of a, <laughs> not a hoity toity family reunion, but like a nicer family reunion. Anyway, like so conservatively conservative. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not how we were dressed. So, so anyway, so we come into this party, we're ready, we're ready to party. We'd been partying already. And so we go out to the backyard and we go hang out and we're sitting in the backyard and all of a sudden I just didn't feel very well. And so my friend made me sit down and within a few minutes I had passed out. Mm. Come to find out after I passed out, like my friend had to pull me away from the party because I had passed gas. <laughs> but luckily at the same time, a dog had run past and she was like, oh, it's totally that dog that did that. But anyway, the embarrassment had already set in for her. So like right when I came to, she was like, we got to get out of this party. And so we ran out of the party and... That's my third truth. Fourth truth. <laughs> Four, that's, that's my fourth, fourth truth. truth. Well, obviously one was a lie. but oh, um, So out of all those, um, one was a lie. I have to say I appreciate the thematics of this. There's this consistent embarrassment passing out. Yeah. But I do know that about you, that you are susceptible to passing out in yeah, a variety of scenarios yeah, so this whenever. makes this is difficult whenever. i've not heard any of these stories you haven't mm -mm. if i have i'm surprised i forgot okay well there you've, there's been a lot because there's I'm been more jerk. so <laughs> you're not jerk. there's a lot yeah there's some that i do recall for mm -hmm. i've been present at some <laughs> but wow this is this is more difficult than i was expecting um uh but i feel like a lot of this had a lot of this decision is based on your um, the detail of your stories and your mannerisms. And when you would look up to the ceiling, I could see you looking for facts. Uh, I feel like the bus stop story with Dart and Ganella. Was that right? Det and Ganella. Det and Ganella. Oh, I was pretty close. Yeah. I feel like that is a lie. That's wrong. It was a truth. That is a truth. Mm -hmm. That was really specific. It was all there. true, though. What? Yeah. All four were true? No, 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 my friend. Oh, like, that one, that was, one true. was true. That one was true. Really? 
what was the uh, well before we go into what was the the lie what do you recall contributed to you passing out in that instance or do you just lose track well (laughs) (laughs) so it's funny because like you know at that point i'm six but at that at that point i have already passed out a number of times in my life um i think that it's because i didn't have enough to eat that morning but like that's a six-year-old just thinking that's what it was so i don't really know why i passed out that morning oh but that i don't know i I had passed out many times by that point is that right Mm -hmm. even that early on wow and you know as i've gotten older i've started to recognize some of the issues with like maybe anxiety or holding my breath in certain situations Mm -hmm. so maybe that's what i was doing at that young of an age and Mm. i was just nervous and so i just passed out i don't know Mm. i don't know but no I really did pass out in a bus station and I hit, I re, I still remember like looking up and like seeing all these people around me and I was told that I fell on a guy's shoe. <laughs> Specifically his shoe. Yeah. And boy, was he upset. Boy, was he He was mad. asking for you to What's this little six-year-old doing? Yeah. Scuff. A scuff here and here. Yep. Wow. Okay. So that is a truth. Yeah. Uh, Boy, all of those sounded, I I mean, they're all of equal stature. Truisms. uh, uh, Truisms, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I give up. What was your... You have to guess again. Uh, Do I? You have to guess again. There's three more stories. Uh, Well, it seems very likely that you would pass out giving blood. So, I'm going to say that's... That's true. So... So the scenario where you're at, <laughs> I'm going to say it's the scenario where you're at this event with your friend Hoyan and you're not dressed accordingly. I wasn't with Hoyan there. Oh, no. Did I get my story? That was with that? other friends. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is with your other friends. Okay. So where you're at this party. Oh no. The Hoyan one was when why I was in uh, high school giving blood. That was oh, the Hoyan one. She was one. with you yes, during yes. the blood yeah, yeah, yeah. the blood drive. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when you were at this gathering mm-hmm. and you were dressed to party but the other guests were not. Oh, you're shaking your head as if it was a true <laughs> trauma. That was real, wasn't it? Mhm. What? Really? Mhm. Wait, what was the fourth story now? It's uh, the lie. The fourth story was, I oh, when I was like around seven or eight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to. I was too many stories. Uh, <laughs> when I was like seven or eight and that kid was doing a cartwheel okay, in yeah. front of me. Really? You made that up? Well, I that made so- partially <laughs> parts of that up. Yeah. Part of that Boy. was made up. I mean, I, so I made up the part where I passed out, but I didn't make up the part where I threw up. And he kicked me in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. That was true. I didn't pass did out, though, sick. oddly enough. But I... I did throw up all over my legs. Through. I remember that. Oh. Yeah. From the trauma Because he kicked me guts? in the tummy. Oh. Yeah. And I was oh. young. Yeah. You've had a lot of trauma. Have I? Be, well, I mean, <sighs> passing out frequently throughout your life, that's, that's one thing. I guess, I guess that's trauma. I don't know. Hmm. Trauma... Unto myself. Hmm. Unto yourself. Wow. Well, this was a great. <laughs> this is a, a great icebreaker. This Thanks, a great, Chad. Great icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that it's up. very good. We do the <laughs> icebreakers at the end. That's what I'll start doing from now on. No. <laughs> um, no, this was a very good first podcast. And uh, are we done? Well, we are. But I know that you and I have a long history, and uh, there are many stories to be told in the future. But uh, for episode one, I think we've captured uh, the essence of what this program is about. We so. just got a drink, though. <laughs> do you have another story you want to share? Well, I'm sure I do. do you? I'm sure you got notes do you? for something. Well, let's just keep recording ourselves because who knows? Maybe something may be more yeah. funny. I wasn't prepared. The more for this. we record. Oh, okay. Uh, um, 
<laughs> Why don't you tell me two truths and a lie? Oh, on the and spot. And I will try and figure it out. Listen. On the spot. You've been here before. Come on. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to limit it to three because... Uh, it's hard. That's a lot to be put on the spot over. Mm-hmm. Okay, so two truths. Because I had notes. And I can't make stuff up that she already knows me. She already knows me. But she knows that I've done that. And that, and that. Um, okay. Uh, first story. Um, I was living on Officer's Row, which is a row of historic homes um, that are part of... Uh, army barracks in Vancouver, Washington. And they're uh, part of the National Historic Registry. And back then when I was living in the homes, they were not. They were kind of dilapidated, but still beautiful. I'd say they're opulent, shabby chic, if you will, in the early 80s. (laughs) Uh, Not funded, not not supported by... Anyway, beside the story. So... uh, we were living there. We were low in, we were a low income family, um, as were most, if not everyone else that was living in the homes at the time, we were paying the city to live there until, uh, the renovation, uh, historic registry thing took effect. So rent was really cheap. Anyway, I don't know why I'm even sharing that part. That, that's beside the point. So anyway, that's where I was living at the time. And there was a lot of kids living on Officer's Row, and they were all about the same age as me. Well, uh, the houses at the time were divided in half like duplexes. They're now uh, quadruplexes. Uh, so the family that lived on the other side of my house was three girls that were sisters. And um, I, for some reason, took to teasing one of the three girls, despite how sweet she was. And uh, <laughs> I lured her to a pond, a uh, stagnant pond, uh, with the guise of there being um, little fish that I thought she'd think were really cool to see floating. You're looking at me like I'm a monster already. So they're... Where is this going? <laughs> Listen, I'm watching how to... Devil. Which, what am I watching now? How to get away with murder. Right, yes. right, right. So I'm seeing where this is going. <laughs> Dirt bag ensued. So, uh, yeah, we got to the shoreline and um, I said, look at all the cool little fish in there and uh, once she leaned over in a vulnerable way, I shoved her into the pond and she I was fully that. immersed. I believe that. And as soon as I did it and she wasn't even fully in the pond, I felt remorse and she emerged, um, with, Dry. N- <laughs> she, <laughs> she came out of the water with a cape on and flew away <laughs> <laughs> and I've been leery of her ever since. <laughs> So she, um, uh, she got up and very, uh, sternly walked back to her house and she just, uh, briefly before, uh, leaving the scene, she turned back to me and said, this was my nice shirt. And then she turned back and walked away and I n- never saw her again. Yeah. So that's story one. That's a lot of detail. That was, a, that was a long story. I bet your second story does not have much detail. That was quite a lie. Um, okay. Uh, story number two. Uh, I Okay. So I was an extra on the set of um, a movie called Dr. Giggles, which is a horror movie in the 90s. I was a teenager. Uh, it's a, a movie based on a really gory comic book. And uh, there was a scene that took place at Saturday Market in Portland. And uh, they partitioned part of Saturday Market off uh, for the shooting of the film. So all of the vendors were real. They're real vendors that participate in the weekly Saturday market. So they have all their mercantile out that would normally be for sale, but they had it set up for the sake of the movie. And uh, I was uh, assigned to walk this particular path through 
uh, a scene and act like I'm looking at the merchandise. And we did this take over and over and over. And arugula, 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 arugula. Mm -hmm. and uh, in one of the takes, there was a lot of chaos, a lot of people involved on the set. Uh, one of the vendors that was in the middle of the path that I had to take was a jeweler and they had uh, rings and necklaces out. And in every take, I would go over to that booth and I would pick up this, uh, ring. It was a, um, silver ring, male ring. And it actually looked really cool and looked like it would fit me. So I'd pick it up every time, set it back down, and then they'd reset the scene and then I come back, pick it up, look at it. I just repeat that same movement every time. Well, on one of the takes, I picked it up and I put it on. And then when we reset, I moved on and I did something else and just left the ring on. And I still have it. It's up in my dresser drawer. So I stole something during the filming of Dr. Giggles. I sound like a real dick here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Third story. My mom, she lives in Vancouver, Washington. Yes. She's got a pickleball court yes. in her backyard. Oh, I know it. And I love it. It occasionally needs maintenance. So it was one day in the summertime. It was about five, seven years ago. I went back there and I was pressure washing it. I just happened to be out there when beyond the arborvitas in her backyard and beyond another set of arborvitas and another set of um, rhododendrons. I hear this call for help uh, and it's distant enough that I feel like I don't need to address it. I felt like maybe it was on the radio or something from a neighbor. And so I kept pressure washing and I turn off my machine once in a while and uh, I would hear that sound again calling for help. And so finally I turned the machine off and started to explore the sound walking through those arborvitas and then walking through the rhododendrons. And I came up upon this elderly woman who had to have been in her mid eighties sprawled out in her garden. She's got, you know, cabbages and uh, broccoli all about her. Okay. That's a little exaggerated, but <laughs> she had vegetation. She had vegetation about her and she was distraught. It was clear even from my perspective that, something was broken because her body was contorted in a not natural way. And so I ran back over to my mom's because I didn't have my cell phone on me. So I, I ran back out. out. <laughs> if we know one thing, you would pass out, yeah. ran back to my mom's house and, uh, got on the phone, called the police ambulance came. I went back up there. She had been back there for three hours suffering with nobody, calling to her or like responding to her call. I go out to my mom's backyard once a year to help her maintain her court. I just happened to be there that wow. day that she needed help. So granted she was out there for a long time. Thank God I happened to be there when she really needed help. So anyway, those are my three stories. One of them's a lie. Do you want me to quickly recount no. them? Are you? No, no, okay. I, I All right. Them. All right. You made a girl look like a fool. And <laughs> you're stealing, and then redemptive. Redemption. The redemption story, Arr. yeah. Redemption, redemption song, exactly. Um, oh, um, I think that your story number two mm. of you stealing the ring is a lie. Wow, friend. You're very good. Why? Why did you think that was a lie? Because I'm not a thief. <laughs> Are you telling me I'm wrong? say that. Are you saying I'm wrong? No, you're right. I am wrong. That was the false. Um, I just felt like you would probably try to lead with a truism, and mm. then you would hit me with um, fakeness, and then I figured that you would follow with something true. So your your deduction is based on my model mm -hmm. for storytelling, not not the content. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, if I had told the <laughs> stories, 
theft story. You told them the in end. a different order <laughs> that I might not have gotten it right. But yeah, it's totally wow. about the process as opposed wow. to the content. Yeah. Wow, you got it. Um, hmm. Wow. Yeah, so that's what I think. Oh, I yeah. Feel about that. So, um, but I think that I know that you um, have been an extra, I know, mm -hmm. multiple times. Um, Dr. Mr. Giggles? Dr. Giggles? Is that a lie? Uh, it's Dr. Giggles. Was that the lie? No, that's true. Okay, no, so no, no, you got the, you got the right lie. That, but, but I mean, was that the, what was the portion that was the lie? Was it that you stole the ring? Was that the lie? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, was, so you kept going back there like you were an extra there and doing that kind of thing, but you didn't yes, steal it. Yes. In fact, <clears throat> it's very good. Yeah, that, that was a good observation. It was a, <laughs> a partial truth. So, yes, I was an extra on Dr. Giggles, um, but there was no scene at the market. Uh, okay. Okay. The, the scenes that I was involved in were uh, was at an amusement park, Oaks Park. Oh, you take it to go um, to Oaks Park. Yeah, Oaks Park is a, an amusement park uh, with theme rides and what have you uh, that's like a carnival. And uh, my involvement in the film involved riding the octopus many, 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 <gasps> many, many times. I got paid for that. Did you get sick at all? I got paid all? for that. No. Really? Oh yeah, as a kid, oh, how it was fun! Fantastic, how fun! I was a freshman in That's high school. So awesome! What a what a great first job! That was my oh, first totally. job. Did you get paid for that? I did. Oh, how much you get paid? Minimum wage four twenty five, four fifty. Who cares? You got a free day at Oaks Park. I was riding rides yeah. and getting paid. I would love mm. that. Yeah, Nicole. Oh yeah, Russell. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you for uh -huh. being my first guest. I feel like we really hit a groove. Uh, Forty five minutes into the show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only a 46 minute show yeah it's so perfect any parting comments no no okay well i also want to thank the listeners who stuck it out for the first episode and i hope you there's stick no, around for the future episodes come on long. is anybody there there's nobody listening this long Hello. Just because they pulled that little scrolly bar across the bottom of the screen, <laughs> to and the they end. were like, mm, one minute." Oh, are they Keaton still McDokies. talking about Oaks Park? Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, thank you again, and uh, enjoy uh, your weekend. Thanks, friend. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. This has been the Richly Bizarre with your host Chad Williams. Join us again for more chills, laughter and extraordinary anecdotes from people like you. Until then, sleep well, friends.